is Sports Center at night. Mountain West misstep. The upset that changed the one seeds and stole a bid from the bubble. How the tournament changed from topping to bottom. History repeats as Trey and Ja battle for the second time this week. Plus, who has the edge in Sunday's battle for LA? And Israel Adesanya defends his middleweight title against Yoel Romero inside UFC 248 from Vegas. Sports Center now. Go ahead, go ahead, get out of here. I don't want to talk anymore. It's better than Rudy. Sam Merrill is a freaking stud. And right from the opening tip, we've got Must SC from the College Hardwood. Obi Toppin, the man gravity forgot. Are you serious, Obi? Go ahead and shake the room, son. Shake it. The breakaway between his legs. The crowd goes crazy. And for good reason. Here's how it sounded on WHIO. He fires ahead to OB. Oh! Oh, he did it again. Between the legs. And the window goes. Oh, this kid is unbelievable. OB topping. Bouncing around, bouncing around, bouncing. Next year's NBA dunk contest with OB, John Morant, and Zion Williamson is going to be epic. I can't wait. But Obi's got some work to do. Still got to get his squad deep into the NCAA tournament. And that's how we get it started on another edition of SportsCenter with Zubin Mahinti. I'm Michael Leaves. And for some, this, week, this weekend was better than others as two teams earned the first official invites to the NCAA tournament. You mentioned Obi and company. They can become an automatic qualifier next Sunday by winning the Atlantic 10 final. Though we had our first two of those cemented, as Mike mentioned, on Saturday. Let's begin with the Mountain West final. There are stakes at large here. San Diego State is trying to hang on to the one seed. Utah State squarely on the bubble. First four out, according to our resident bracketologist, Joe Lenardi. The 21st Mountain West Conference Tournament. Usually it's played a week later, but there's a construction convention, Mike, in town next week, so they had to get it done tonight. Sam Merrill would have challenged Malachi Flynn for Mountain West Conference Player of the Year if he was healthy. Utah State down one. And then Merrill... They say he's got more competitive juices than anybody in the conference, and the Aggies are up about a minute to go. San Diego State down one. This is why Malachi Flynn edged out Merrill and everyone else to be the Mountain West Conference Player of the Year. Aztecs up one with one regular season loss to UNLV. 30 seconds to go, all tied. Flynn, you got to put it in his hands. Back rim, too strong. Back the other way. The Aggies, look at this shot. Sam Merrill is a freaking stud, as they said at the top of the show. Here's how it sounded. Six seconds, five seconds. Sam rises for three. Yes! You've got to be kidding me. Sam, I am Merrill straight away three. Sam Merrill is a freaking stud. I know. I just said that. So did you. 2.6 seconds to go. San Diego State with a chance to tie. Mike, this looks pretty good. That to tie, wow. ooh. Utah State gets the automatic qualifier. They win the Mountain West Conference Tournament. After the game, their head coach, Craig Smith, after he can breathe a sigh of relief, after that did not drop. How did it not go in? I don't know. Gordon Hayward-like for Butler, right? After the game, Coach Smith said, they drew inspiration from our late, great ESPN coaching colleague. The late, great Jim Balvano, we watched the video that he uh, speaks that he had, and he, and he said, our bags are packed, our bags are packed. And we made up our mind after a tough loss at Boise that our bags are gonna be packed, and we were ready for this day, and we showed a lot of fight. We kind of seized some momentum at halftime, and we found a way to win against the number five team in the country with great determination. Well, in any case, your bags are always packed when you're going to Vegas, I guess. So after San Diego State's loss, Dayton with a chance to move up to the one seed in the East, according to Lenardi. All they need to do is beat George Washington University. Doesn't seem like much to ask. They've beaten every team in the A-10. College game day was in the house, Mike. One of the great scenes the show has ever had. Gigantic crowd, and Obi Toppin was absolutely positively ready to go. Can you believe this guy was a zero-star recruit? Nobody wanted him, had a big growth spurt, kind of like Anthony Davis, and then everybody was all on top of him, but it was too late. Dayton took him, and then back the other way. They're looking for an 18-0 league record. They're looking for 20 straight wins. 
And with this guy leading the way, that was just one of a number of great dunks he had. We're gonna step out here and let you see one of his great ones in just a second. Back the other way, Dayton scored 50 in the second half. And that one going between the legs. Mike said he's getting ready for that dunk contest. No question. Whew. Yeah, Obi Toppin, flight deck, you bet. Does this seem a little bit familiar? Perhaps it does. Wasn't the first time he's done it. A couple years ago, Dayton, Southern Georgia, back when nobody really knew about Obi Toppin. Now everybody knows. Same deal between the legs. And then you go back from this to Saturday night. Toppin, 27, 5, and 5. If you're wondering, the Atlantic 10 tournament starts next week at the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, and next Sunday they should be playing for the championship. They have no home losses, no road losses, Mike, which is weird. They have two neutral court losses. That's it. This is their highest ranking since the 1950s, and they have a 25-point win. Anthony Grant knows Dayton so well. He played there. There's one of the greats, Obi Toppin, walking off the court for the final time, you'd imagine, in their home arena. I mentioned it. Undefeated at home and on the road. The OT losses were to Kansas, Titan Maui, and a two-point loss to Colorado. Other than that, nobody's been able to touch them. Their offense is incredible. According to Ken Palm, great metric, they rank second among all D1 teams in offensive efficiency behind Gonzaga. Dayton shooting over 52% from the field, on pace to be the fourth best by any team over the last 20 seasons. We'll see what they do in the conference tourney. And obviously, Toppin is the man, on pace to have the fifth highest field goal percentage by any D1 guy to average 20 and 15 in the last 15 seasons, right behind Zion and Blake Griffin. That is some pretty good company. Well, Joe Lenardi right now has Kansas as the number one overall seed in the tournament, meaning they would be the number one seed in the Midwest, trying to win that outright Big 12 title yet again. And Texas Tech was throwing more dudes at Udoka Azubuki than the Bachelorette, but it didn't matter. Azubuki, not to be denied, threw traffic with the dunk. And then watch this. Four defenders come to Azubuki, but then he called on his bros for assistance out to... Devon Dotson, he had a team high 17 points, also chipped in seven boards, five assists. Let's go to the second half because